In the past few lessons, I've shown all kinds of ways that you can mess up a C program by reading in data from the command prompt using functions such as scanf and getS. One of the biggest problems is a buffer overflow. That happens when someone enters more characters than your program has reserved, say for a string, which is an array of characters. So if getS and scanf are not fit for this job, well, what is? In this lesson, I look at a few possible alternatives, starting with fgets. fgets takes three arguments. One, the storage location for data, which might be an array of characters into which the data will be read. Two, the maximum number of characters that are to be read. Three, a pointer to a file structure. Now, this is the name of the data source or stream from which to read. When reading from the system prompt rather than from a disk file, this is going to be STDIN, standard input, which is indeed, as I can see from this Microsoft documentation, a pointer to a file structure. Because fgets takes an argument specifying the maximum number of characters, you may think it's a completely safe function, but that's not entirely true. Let's Look at a potential problem here. I'll use this function you can see on screen. And my str array is capable of storing eight characters. So now let me try this by running it. And I'll enter eight characters. Press enter. And now you can see there's a problem. When I print the contents of the array, it seems only to contain seven characters. It ends with the G, not the H. That's because strings in C are null terminated. The end of a string is marked with a null character, so the fgets function automatically appends a null. Now let's see uh, what's going on. I can get a better look at this if I run this in the debugger this time. Again, I'll enter my eight characters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, press enter, go back into the into Visual Studio, you can see it stopped at this breakpoint. And now I can find out uh, what's going on by looking in the locals window. And here it shows me that the null terminator is added here at position seven with uh, index, uh, the first index being at zero and the last index here being at index seven. So what's happened to that missing eighth character, the H that I entered when I entered the string? Well, it's still there hanging around in memory. And when I next do some data reading, it's any of those characters, the leftover characters left hanging around in memory that are going to be read in first. Let's see an example of this. This is the code that I'm going to run this time. And this code calls fgets twice, once to read the first name and once to read the last name. So let me run this and see what happens. And once again, I'll enter that memorable eight letter first name, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, press enter, and bang, the program ends without prompting me to enter the last name. But last name, the last name array, seems to contain that missing H character that I thought I'd entered for the first name. Now to understand this, let's once again turn to the debugger. So here I am in the debugger, same code. I've already entered the string A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H for first name. I'll look at the first name down here. So as before, it's uh, been initialized from A to G, but then there's been this null appended. Let's have a look at last name. So last name, you can see now, this is the contents of the last name array, which I didn't enter anything for at the command prompt, but I can see that the two unprocessed characters, the H, that's here, plus the carriage return slash N, that were entered at the command prompt intended for first name, they've immediately been processed by the second F get S uh, function call, and those two characters have now been read into the last name array, which is not what I intended. In order to fix that, I need to use up any extra characters which were entered, but which were not read into the first name array. These unused characters are stored in a buffer 
which is an area of memory that you can think of as intermediate or temporary storage for input and output operations. Here the characters are stored in the buffer until my program explicitly makes use of them. The second time I call fgets, it reads in the characters left over from the first time I used fgets. And that's why those characters are read into the last name array. Now, to stop that happening, I need to use up the excess characters before this second fgets. Using up characters that are in a buffer is called flushing the buffer. The simplest way to flush the buffer is to read in the characters that it contains. In this case, I want to read all the characters up until a new line, that's slash n, which indicates the end of input entered at the command prompt. And that's what I do in this rewritten code. Now, after each reading operation, I call this function here, flush underscore input, uh, to use up any extra characters left in the buffer. Now, let's look at that. I've written this simple function up here, flush underscore input. It reads up to a new line, or an end of file, EOF, which is a predefined symbol that happens to be minus one. The while loop then continues reading characters while the character that is read is not a new line character. And it also uh, is not an end of file. Well, let's see the effect of this. When I run it, I'll enter my A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, eight characters. Okay, so, so far so good. And another eight characters. Okay, so it's truncated the characters, but it hasn't blown up my program and it hasn't left characters in the buffer to cause problems. Incidentally, the C library also contains a flushing function called fflush, but the implementation of this varies from compiler to compiler and it may only flush output rather than input buffers. And in any case, my little flushing routine is short and it's simple, and it shows exactly what's going on. But are there better alternatives to get s and f get s? Well, yeah, maybe. Most C compilers have newer functions which are intended to be safer. The downside is that the recommended functions may be different in different compilers, so by using one, you may sacrifice portability of your code. For the record, Microsoft now recommends using get s underscore s. This at least lets you know when an error occurs, and you can then work out a way of avoiding it. On the other hand, maybe neither f get s nor get s underscore s does quite what you want. Now, personally, I just want to read a certain number of characters, and if the user enters more than I'm expecting, I want to silently truncate that string. To do that, I've written my own string reading function, which I've called readLn. Now, this reads a maximum number of characters, which I specify as the second argument, maxLn, and it reads one character at a time using the getChar function. It stops reading chars when the user presses the enter key, that is, when the new line character is read, or when EOF again is reached. The string s is built up one character at a time, and any characters beyond the new line continue to be read, even though they're not added to my string. Remember, reading them in will, in effect, flush the buffer by using up the excess characters, they aren't left hanging around, waiting to be read in by any subsequent line reading functions. And that's what caused some problems when I used getS and fgets. Now here I've defined the maximum length up here to be five, so, so I'm expecting the string to have no more characters than five per read operation. If I enter fewer characters, the routine works as expected without leaving any extra characters to mess up the second call to read ln. So I'll try that with too few characters. First, remember, it's expecting five. So let's try it with a, a very short string, one, two, a, b. So that's working OK. But of course, the problem that I've mostly had is with strings that are too long. So let's try it with a very long string. 
Okay, this could cause problems if the buffer isn't uh, flushed. And another string. But you can see it's worked correctly. But because I've declared the maximum length to be five, including the new line, when I enter more characters, the string is truncated so that I only get the first four characters, plus, of course, the null at the end. And now I can see what's going on in the debugger. So you can see that what's happened is that the uh, first four characters I entered when I was prompted for first name, they've been read in and a null has been appended. The excess characters, the characters beyond those that were read in, have just been used up. The buffer's been flushed. They're no longer hanging around waiting to cause me problems. Same thing with the last name. Uh, first four characters were read in and put in the last name array and a null at the end. Now, I've explained this code, the code of this line reading function that I've written in a bit more detail in my book, The Little Book of C. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And to be alerted when I upload new videos, be sure to subscribe and click the little bell.